Hi there everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're watching A Ritter Bit Will Do. My name is John and this is my tractor. I just finished snow blowing. I just finished clearing some snow. And in my last video that I posted of me clearing snow, I told you that I have a few tips for you, all right? Because there's a lot of new tractor owners out there that don't know this and I don't want you to learn the hard way like I did. So I've been there, done that, got a lot of experience. I've got it figured out and I'm gonna share my ideas, my tips, uh, my advice for you. So stick around. Early this winter, I did a video with uh, some other YouTubers. Uh, Hank Hamilton kind of led the whole thing. And my part of the video was to tell you guys about some winter tips, right? So if you missed that video, I'm gonna cover everything that I talked about in those two minutes, in these eight or nine minutes, however long this takes. Hopefully we can wrap it up a little quicker. This in my hand, this is a fuel filter a diesel fuel filter for your tractor, okay? This is an actual genuine Kubota uh, fuel filter. Uh, part number is 12581430012. You need two of them, okay? You should be changing them, I don't know how often, I can't remember what the maintenance thing says, but you should never have to change one in the winter time. And I've seen a lot of you struggle. And oh man, I, I, I just cringe. It's, it's painful to watch. I have seen two people on YouTube that have YouTube channels already experience frozen filters. And I've seen about four or five people in the Facebook groups wondering why their tractor won't work in the winter. It keeps stalling. What's the problem? Your fuel line is froze. Your filter is gelling up. That's the problem. You need to address this issue. This is super important. Now, let me tell you guys something. Five, six years ago, whatever the first winter was, I had my tractor. I was uh, plowing snow. It was 20 below. I kid you not. And that does not count the wind chill. Okay, 20 below. I was about halfway done, three quarter of the way done. And the tractor quit. 20 below. You, I don't know if a lot of you know how cold 20 below is. But when you add a wind chill into it, you get like 35, 40 below wind chill. And it is cold. Brr, it's cold. Being underneath the tractor, outside, because I couldn't get the tractor started to bring it in here, had to crawl underneath the tractor because that's where Kubota decided to put the fuel filter, which is stupid, by the way. Kubota fixed that. Seriously. Dumb. Oh, man, it really frustrates me. Anyways, I had to crawl under my tractor. Fingers frozen. Changing this stupid thing. All right? It was not a fun experience. You need a fuel treatment. All right? Yes, you might get treated fuel from your fuel station, but there is no guarantee that the fuel that says it's treated is treated. There's no guarantee on that. It might be leftover fuel that they had in the tank from last year. It might be a diluted treated uh, fuel source because, you know, it, there was still some there that was left over. You don't know. Don't trust the fuel station. Get a fuel treatment. This is just one of many, all right? This works for me. So this is what I use. I don't use anything else because this has always worked. This is ISO heat, okay? Yes, it can work in diesel engines, right? See, diesel, fuels, safe for use in gas, E10, E85, and diesel fuels. This keeps my fuel line from freezing. Here's, here's a problem. Now, I want you guys to understand this. If your tractor is stalled in the winter time, most likely your fuel line has been frozen. And if you open your fuel tank, right? So you open it up and, and, you're, and you grab a flashlight and you look in there and, and you're like, I don't see any ice. That's because it sinks to the bottom. You're not gonna see any ice in your fuel. You might if it's really super duper cold, but the ice in your fuel goes to the bottom of the tank, right to your fuel filter. And it can't get through your fuel filter very well at all. I'm telling you guys, you've got to treat your fuel. You have, I don't know how many times I have to watch you guys mess this up. And, and, and I'm not an expert. I struggled too, but oh man, when I watch other people struggle, because there's, there's videos out there that I would have anticipated you would have already watched. You know, you should have, you should be watching my videos, guys. You'd learn this stuff. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, we all make mistakes, don't we? But you got to treat your fuel. Otherwise, you are going to, it, 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 you're not going to have a fun day. I certainly didn't have a fun day when that happened to me. 
Oh, I can remember it like it was yesterday too. My, my fingers get cold just thinking about it. Brr, my teeth start to chatter. Oh, it's cold. Brr. All right. Tip number one, treat your fuel. Tip number two. All right, what's your tip number two be? All right. I know what tip number two is. Tip number two is an engine block heater. If you bought your tractor from a northern climate, northern part of the country where it gets cold, I really hope that your dealer treated you right and installed a block heater for your tractor. Okay, that's what this is. See, this just plugs into an extension cord and there's a heating element that goes right into the block of the tractor and warms up the engine before I start it. I don't leave it plugged in all the time. That's not good for the block heater. Uh, but I plug it in about a, a half hour or an hour before I use the tractor and it makes starting so much nicer. Get yourself a block heater. They're pretty inexpensive. If your dealer didn't give you one and you think they should, call them up and complain. I, they they really should be throwing those things in for free. I, I I really believe they should. They're inexpensive and it's a it's a it's something you almost have to have. All right, tip number what are we on? Tip number three, four? I can't remember. Tip number three. All right, this is tip number three. We're going to talk about shear bolts for those of you that have snow blowers. Okay. I have a snow blower, front mount snow blower. Absolutely love the thing. Back here is a shear bolt, right? This is the impeller. This is the one that breaks most often. However, there are shear bolts on the auger on the right hand side and on the left hand side. So there's a shear bolt. They're the same size and every once in a while they will break as well. Now, you can go to your dealer and you can pay about three to four times the price for a shear bolt or you can go to your hardware store you can get yourself a pound of these things um which is i don't know quite a bit i suppose they don't weigh very much so this is a two and a half inch grade two five sixteenth bolt okay five sixteenth inch bolt with a, a lock washer and a nut um, you could probably get one of those nylon nuts and, and make life a little bit easier for yourself. I keep a few of these in my toolbox in the tractor along with uh, a wrench to tighten them up with. And every once in a while, I'll break one. It doesn't happen too often, uh, but it does happen from time to time. You would much rather have a shear bolt break than your drive shaft break or, or even worse, something inside your tractor gearbox transmission break. Oh, that would be terrible. Uh, wouldn't, that'd be expensive too. Oh man, that would that would ruin that wouldn't ruin your day. That would ruin your next couple of weeks probably waiting for that thing to get fixed. So get yourself some shear bolts from your hardware store. Don't worry about going to your dealer and getting them. Look, I've got a I got a whole bag full of them. Okay, five sixteenths inch, two and a half inches long. Um, they work perfect. All right, don't waste your money on the actual shear bolts. It's not worth it. They're the same thing. All right, tip number five, turtle wax. Okay, spray on turtle wax. <laughs> not to clean your tractor, guys. This works the absolute best for making sure that you don't get a clogged up snow blower, uh, making sure that snow doesn't stick to your snow blower. It makes things move so much better. Okay, think about it. Cross-country skiers, snowboarders, you know, downhill skiers, they wax their skis. They wax their board. It makes them go faster. It keeps snow from sticking, right? That's exactly what this does, okay? It works so good. Just coat the living daylights out of your snowblower and especially inside the chute because that's where it tends to clog up the most. Keep this in, a, in an environment where it doesn't freeze because this stuff will freeze in your garage. You know what else I do? I coat the blade, okay? I coat the blade of it. Works great. And another thing, I spray my windows. I spray the windows on my cab. Now you might not have a cab, but if you do, spray your windows with turtle wax. The water beads right off so much nicer. The ice doesn't stick to it. Oh man, it's so nice. Works really slick. <laughs> All right, tip number four or five or six, I lost track already. Lighting, all right? My One of my videos on my tractor was my LED lights. I showed you how I made that light bar. Add as many lights to your tractor as you possibly can because more often than not, you are gonna be moving snow at night. These are pretty handy. These are from Art Artillion, right? They, they move on this nice little hinge system. Check it out. They, I can have them aiming forward. I can have them aiming backwards um, but what I like to do in the winter time 
I like to have them aiming off to the side. I really like to light up 360 degrees around the tractor. It is such a much safer way to be uh, moving snow. Um, but yeah, I got lights on the back. I got lights going off to the side, lights on the front. I always uh, try to keep my, my flasher lights on and the headlights on. You cannot have enough light. The, you, the last thing you want to do, you do not want to run into a car or a garage door or even worse, a, a person or a pet. That would be, that'd be terrible. So light up everything around you. Uh, yeah, you'll see a lot more things that way. A little bit safer, a little bit smarter. Okay, do I have another tip? Let me think. I thought of another tip. This is a broken broom handle. I've had a couple of people ask me what I used. Uh, last time I, I, I had, I was brushing off the snow on my tractor one time and somebody asked me, what is, what kind of brush is that? I've never seen one. Well, it's a broken broom. That's all it is. It's just a broom that broke in half, okay? I kept it and I use it for brushing the snow off of my tractor before I park it in the garage because then less snow is melting onto the, onto the floor and I have less puddles. So um, there's a tip, just brush your tractor off when you're done using it. I have enough weight on my tractor with the cab and the back blade and the front snow blower to where I get some pretty decent traction. But if you don't have that type of weight on your tractor, you might want to add some. And one way that I've thought of adding a little bit of weight is in my wheel wells. I want to get some rear wheel weights uh, that insert, right? Because then I don't also, this sells, this kills two birds with one stone, right? Then I don't get the snow accumulating inside of the wheel and I also get a little bit better traction. Another thing, I'm thinking about getting VersaTurf tires. So if you've got VersaTurf tires, let me know. I would like to give those, those a try. So let me know in the comments what you think of those. I've given you a few tips now. I've given you several tips. I, I kind of lost track. I don't know how many it's been, but the most important one, you do not want to be changing this thing in the winter time. It is not fun, promise. So pay attention, treat your fuel. You gotta treat your fuel. It is the best way to prevent a really bad day for you, <laughs> okay? Um, so there you go, you guys. Uh, in the comments, here's the task for you. Tell me where you're from and what you do. I'd like to hear more about my subscribers. Uh, I'm from I'm from kind of the central Minnesota, and uh, and I'm a teacher. So if you didn't know that, I I teach, and we've been doing this online thing for a while, and it's getting old. But anyway, if you got any questions for me, join our Facebook group. We've got a Facebook group. It's called A Ritter Bit Will Do. Uh, join up. Tell me, you know, post pictures of your tractor if you'd like to. I gotta close this out because my battery is dying. So until next time, everybody, keep on tractoring and God bless.